Hello everybody, I'm Pastor Scott Villain with HolyImpactMinistries.com and today we're here to show you how to do a proper baptism. We have a lot of our brothers and sisters out there who are now baptizing as they should. But it's very important for everybody to know how and when to actually baptize. And so today we're going to run through the procedure of how to baptize properly and what to say and what not to say. Today we have uh, our beautiful Brooke Villane. Sister Brooke is here and she's going to help us in our endeavor to try and teach everyone how to properly baptize. Say hello, Sister Brooke. Shalom, everybody. Shalom, everybody. So uh, the first thing that we want to do and the first thing that we want to understand is that it is written in Acts 2.38, Peter says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins. Now this is extremely important for us to know and to understand. The first thing that one must do is to repent of their sins. What does that mean? It does not mean to just say, I'm sorry of my sins. Repenting is an action word. It means that you are agreeing not to go back to your sin. It, it means that you are agreeing not to return like a dog to its vomit or to a pig to its mire and go back into your sin. You are agreeing that you are not going to go back and do those things again. So repentance is something that is extremely important that a Christian must do before being baptized. Okay, repentance first. Repent and then be baptized, Peter says. And it's the same thing that our Messiah says as well. Something else that we need to understand before we get baptized is that if a woman is menstruating or on her cycle uh, that particular month, she should not come before Yahovah God to be baptized. If you have been at a funeral and you have touched a dead body that day, you should not be coming before God within that 24-hour period because you are unclean and you have touched an unclean thing. And this is very, very important. We need to make sure that when we come before Yahovah, that we are in a clean state. Uh, this is very, very important that many people do not uh, pay attention to and do not understand concerning baptism. Uh, when we are baptized, the Bible tells us whenever two or more are joined together, that Yeshua will also be there with them. And this is very important. He is actually here with us, uh, with his entourage of angels surrounding us. So I want us to know that and I want us to understand how important it is to be in a clean state when you come before Yahovah to be baptized. Now, with all of that out of the way, uh, Sister Brooke, we're going to assume that she has agreed that she is going to repent and not sin anymore and not return to her sin anymore, but that she is now going to pick up her cross and she is going to follow the Messiah. That means walking as he walked. That means doing as he did. And that's what that means. And she's going to try to the very best of her ability to do these things. And uh, so have you repented, Sister Brooke? Yes. Yes, okay, very good. Now, the next thing that I'm going to ask as the person who is baptizing is I'm going to ask Sister Brooke, Sister Brooke, do you believe that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, is the only begotten Son of God? Yes. yes. So she has confessed with her mouth that she believes that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, is indeed the only begotten Son of the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is extremely important. Sister Brooke, do you believe that He died for your sins and for the sins of the world? Yes. yes, she believes that he died for her sins. So she has confessed this. There are two or more witnesses. Now we must remember that the Bible says that truth is clarified by two or more witnesses. And that it is substantiated by two or more witnesses. So we have two or more witnesses at least that are standing here right now today. So we have that uh, as well that has been fulfilled according to Scripture. Now, at this point in time, she has repented of her sins. She has openly confessed that she believes Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, is indeed the only begotten Son of God. She also has confessed that He has died for her sins. She is now ready to be baptized. Now, I'm going to give her some simple instructions about how to hold her hands and her nose. Now, this can be very important, my friends. If you don't want to botch your baptism, uh, be sure to give these instructions. Now. If you are right-handed, 
And what I want you to do is I want you to hold your nose with your right hand, okay? With your left hand, I want you to grab your wrist, your right wrist. Now I want you to tuck your elbows in and keep all of this nice and tight because I am going to use this as a handle to bring you into the water and to bring you back up out of the water. So you have to keep those elbows in tight, okay? Now, very simply, now if they are left-handed, then you would want to take the left hand and hold the nose and the right hand would grab this and keep those elbows tucked in. Keep everything nice and tight and tucked in because this is the handle that we're going to use to bring that person down in and, and back up. We're going to put this hand around the back of that person. Okay, so we now we have a handle around the back of that person and we also have a handle in the front that we can actually bring them back up. Now, Brooke, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you under the water and I'm going to count two seconds and I'm going to hold you under the water for two seconds. One, two, and then I'm going to bring you back up. Now, why do we do that? Again, Brooke is going down into the watery grave, following our Messiah, into the watery grave of baptism. And so she needs to be fully immersed in that water. So it's not, we're, got, we're not going to throw ourselves back and, and come back up. You need to give the person being baptized some instructions so that they know what to expect. Oftentimes, if you do not give them instruction, they will throw themselves back and want to come back up before things are completely done and you have people floundering around and, and you, you lose control of the person and that's not good. So we wanted this to be very gentle, very easy. I'm going to lay you back, I'm going to hold you one, two, and then I'm going to bring you back up and that's how it's going to work, okay? So don't do it too quickly. I want you to relax when you do this, enjoy this baptism. Uh, this is something that you're only going to do most likely once in your lifetime if it's very meaningful to you and if you understand it properly. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do the actual baptism. Okay, hold your nose and get in position. Remember, tuck the elbows in. And now I am going to say what our Messiah commands us to say. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, and in the name of Yahovah, the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the Ruach HaKodesh of God, I now baptize you in the name of Yeshua. Here we go. Ready? One, two. Back up. And she is now baptized properly. Just that easy, nice and easy, no problems at all. Now, I want us to understand, many people will say, well, you only have to be baptized in the name of Yeshua Jesus. Okay? This is not the way our Messiah commanded us to be baptized. He said, go and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Ruach HaKodesh, also known as the Holy Spirit. So we must use those names. Again, very, very important. So it doesn't really matter what order that you use them in. It doesn't matter what you say. But always say before you baptize, I now baptize you. And I'm going to baptize you in the name of Yahovah, the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, His only begotten Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh. And as long as you get those names in there and, just, and, and say the name of Yeshua, be sure to say that name because that is the new name. We have to remember they were baptizing in, uh, in John's baptism already in the name of, of Yahovah and his Ruach HaKodesh, but they were, the new name was Jesus, Yeshua. That was the new name that they needed to add into the equation. So we need to make sure that we use all three of those when we actually baptize as specified by our Messiah. Very important. And that pretty much concludes our baptism. It's really not that hard to do. Anyone can baptize. You do not need to go to a pastor or to a priest or to a bishop and certainly not to a pope in order to be baptized. All you have to do is find someone who believes in Yeshua HaMashiach as being the one true only begotten son of the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that person can baptize. You should be baptizing. And if someone asks you to baptize them, it is a great honor to be able to baptize someone. And we need to make sure that we're doing it properly. And with that being said, we just want to say thank you so very much for joining us at HolyImpactMinistries.com. That is the proper way to baptize. Shalom, everybody. Shalom.